welcome along to number four in our Landlord Basics series and I'm delighted to be joined by Tessa Shepperson of Landlord Law and today Tessa and I are going to be talking about an introduction to possession notices and Tessa this is quite a complex area really oh. isn't it if we think about your average landlord with a couple of properties tenant goes into rent arrears once they've gone into two months arrears, that is when they can consider um, serving notice. What are the steps that they need to take to do this correctly? Um, okay, well, there's a number of things that you need to consider. It, first of all, you need to consider what sort of tenancy do you have? Because although most tenancies were short, short hold tenancies, there are a few which aren't. Um, so if you're renting a property to a limited company, or if you're renting self-contained accommodation in your own home, then that's going to be a common law tenancy. It's not going to be an assured shorthold tenancy, and the procedure is slightly different. Mm -hmm. um, there's also the question that sometimes people think if they've got a lodger that they need to get an order for possession. They somehow get it muddled up with tenancies. And I need to say, first of all, that if, you, if you're talking about a lodger who isn't paying the rent, then um, provided they've, that you share living accommodation with them, you don't actually have to go, go to court at all. And I've got detailed guidance on that, which is available free of charge on my Lodger Landlord site, which is www.lodgerlandlord.co.uk. So go there and look at that. Yep. If it is a tenancy, um, then first of all, it's why do you want possession? I mean, the normal reason why people want possession is because the tenants in arrears of rent. But it's not always the reason why people want possession. Sometimes they just want their property back, perhaps because they want to live in it or perhaps because they you know, they need to realise their asset and sell it. Mm -hmm. um, so there are a number of different reasons. Um, now, let's just look at assured shorthold tenancies. There are, when you are bringing possession through the courts, you want to use a procedure where you are, provided you get it right, guaranteed to get an order for possession. Yep. Um, now, there are two types of um reasons for getting possession they're mandatory they're called grounds mandatory grounds and discretionary grounds um, now there are a number of reasons or, or legal grounds that you can use to get possession of the property like if they've damaged the furniture or if they've just a little bit of arrears of rent or they've broken one of the terms of the tenancy agreement these are discretionary grounds and i would um, advise people not to use them unless there is absolutely no other way because it's very difficult to get an order of possession using that. It's probably going to be defended. Your tenants could get legal aid and you f could find yourself caught up in a long, drawn-out and expensive case. So you want to think, what are the mandatory grounds or reasons that I can use to get possession and are they available to me? So there are really two. The first one is, as you mentioned, the serious rent arrears ground. The other one is Section 21. Um, now, I usually say to people, if at all possible, you want to go down the Section 21 route because there's less to get wrong. Now, if you're getting possession using Section 21, if your notice is right and your court paperwork right and you, you, you've done everything correctly, there is no defence and you are guaranteed your order. And it's usually fairly straightforward and there's not a lot the tenants can do to mess it around. Okay. On the other hand, if you're bringing possession um, using the mandatory rent arrears ground, it is possible, if tenants um, want to mess you around, for them to put in a defence saying that they've paid the rent, which means that that puts you, you, you you've got to prove that they haven't. Um, they could put in a defence saying that you owe them money because you haven't um, kept the property in proper repair. You know, there are a number of things like that that, that tenants can do which will make it more difficult for you to bring your claim. It's, uh, it's, I mean, I have, when I was doing eviction, I have obtained many, many orders for possession without problem using the rent arrears ground. But it has to be said that it's more straightforward if you can use Section 21. So you, you need to look at wh whether you can use Section 21 or not. And if you can't use Section 21, whether you can use one of the other grounds, which is normally the rent arrears ground. Now, on your website, you actually have um, a resource that can advise or yeah. uh, direct people of which which uh, route they should go down. That's right. Yes, on on landlord law, um, and you can put the link underneath um, this uh, this um, um, video. Uh, this yeah, we will. video. Mm -hmm. um, there is a free resource that I have now, where you go and you answer question and answer 
which will take you to the most appropriate proceedings. Um, so far as Section 21 is concerned, it's, first of all, it's got to be an assured shorthold tenancy. Right. Um, secondly, um, there are a number of things which you have got to have sorted out before you can serve your Section 21 notice. The most important one, which tends to go wrong most often at the moment, is to do with tenancy deposits. If you've taken a tenancy deposit, um, you must have protected it and served the prescribed information on your tenant. Um, so, so if you have taken a deposit, you need to go and check that you have complied with the requirements properly before you serve your Section 21 notice. Because if you haven't, and you serve a Section 21 notice, the tenants can challenge it and put in a defence and you may get your case slung out. Um, getting your case slung out is not good, firstly because um, it will delay things and secondly because if the tenants have got solicitors, you're going to be ordered to pay their legal costs. So it's not something you want to happen. We're actually seeing a couple of discussions along these lines on the forum at the moment of tenants, uh, of, sorry, of landlords that are trying to serve notice and they haven't protected the deposit. Yeah. And I think that's a very good point that you raise, that if you haven't, you can't actually go down the no. Section 21 route. And I think the other point you alluded to, uh, Tessa, was how important it is to fill out the forms correctly. Because if you even get one thing wrong... Um, it will be slung out and you'll be right back to square one. So it's vital yes, you, you, to you do need it. To be, you need to be very careful. I mean, if I could just go back to the preliminary things, uh, uh, as well as the tenancy deposits, the other preliminary thing that you've got to sort out is if you have, uh, if your property is a house in multiple occupation and it is one of those houses in multiple occupation which needs to have a licence, again, if you haven't got a licence for that HMO, you can't serve your section. Well, you can't serve a valid Section Twenty One notice, and that is another reason for your proceedings to be chucked out. So you need, if you've got more than three people there who are um, who are not related, you need to check, um, you know, whether it is a HMO, whether it's one that needs to be licensed, and sort that out. Now, it's not the case at the moment, but uh, the this video will be online for some time. Um, the Deregulation Act is bringing in further requirements that people are going to have to check, further prerequisites that people will need to satisfy before they can serve a valid Section 21 notice. Um, I believe these are going to be things like um, serving a, a gas certificate, the annual gas safety certificate, and also EPC certificates. So if you are watching this after the Deregulation Act is coming to force, those are other things that you need to check, and you need to have all your everything in order before you serve your Section 21 notice, because if you don't, then it'll, it'll, it'll be invalid. Then when you actually come to drafting it up, as, as you say, Vanessa, you need to be careful. There have been some changes um, in the requirements for Section 21. It has changed recently as a result of um, the Spencer and Taylor case. Mm -hmm. and it has come, become a bit easier for landlords. But basically, there are two types of Section 21 notice. There is a straightforward Section 21 notice, which is what you serve during the fixed term of a tenancy or if it's a statutory periodic tenancy, and that's the notice has to give two months' notice and it mustn't end before the end of a fixed term. The more complicated procedure is under Section 21.4, and that at the moment is the type of notice that you need to serve if the tenancy has been periodic from the start or if you are in a contractual periodic tenancy. And the main thing about that is you have to give a last day of a period of the tenancy. That date has to go in the notice. Yep. Um, now, a Section 21.4 notice will always be valid. A Section 21.1 notice may not be valid if you've served it in the wrong circumstances. Um, so, um, you know, if, if in doubt, serve a Section 21.4. Again, the Deregulation Act is bringing in changes regarding Section 21. Um, and I believe these requirements are going to be changed. So um, if you are watching this video after that act has come into force, you need to double check things. Um, but that's, that's Section 21. You, you need to deal with that. Going back to rent arrears, if you can't, can't use a Section 21 notice for some reason, say, for example, you've got a very long fixed term. Say you've got a 12-month or an 18-month or two-year fixed term and the tenants have fallen into arrears of rent right at the beginning of that, you can't use Section 21 because you can't use that notice to um, evict your tenants until after the fixed term has ended, and that could be a year away. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're going to have to use the, um, the rent arrears ground. Um, you need to, um, there is a prescribed form for that, 
uh, and you need to fill it out quite carefully. You have to give the proper notice period, which is not less than two weeks. Make sure, don't give it, don't, don't make your notice periods too tight because sometimes um, if they're served on a certain day, it may be deemed served the following day and you may find if you get to court that you haven't given enough notice. So it's always best to give them an extra few days notice. So that doesn't happen with your notice period. Um, if you're going to be using the possession claims online procedure, you really need to serve a schedule of rent arrears with your notice because then that's going to make it easier for you um, when you bring your claim for possession. So you need to have um, a detailed schedule and that needs to be um, in, the, in the proper format, which has a number of columns, date, rent paid, rent due, and a running total along the right. And that's, that's the format the judges will want it um, um, submitted when you go to court for rent arrears. Okay, um, Tessa. Well, that's really, really helpful um, input there. Thank you very much. And there are a number of resources out there. Um, if you feel that you need extra support in working out the notice, mm. one of which is Tessa's, um, um, we'll put some more information about that underneath the video. So um, thanks very much for that, Tessa. And in the next video, we're going to just have a quick chat about how to actually serve the notice yeah. on the tenant. So okay. that's it for now. Thank you.